Check out them drops. <laughs> yeah, you tell them. Get him, Shelby. Get him. Hello, fellow dreamers. So, just doing a video out in my backyard right now, and, and it was just raining not too long ago. My dog's been outside barking at it, and he still is. And I'm just going to take this moment to, first of all, First of all, say hello to everybody who has been involved with the Team Lucid Dream project happening at facebook.com slash Team Lucid Dream. I'm just going to do a quick introduction and then I'm going to spend some time talking about what dreams are from my perspective. So I'll be explaining it as if you, the viewer, might be someone who has never really been introduced to some of these ideas. So some of it might be some stuff you've heard before in different ways, but the whole point of this is that by talking about it more, it helps us explain it more. And, and I encourage you to explain what dreams are in your way as well. And uh, try not to mind Shelby, like he's just like adding to the conversation here. So first of all, my name is Brendan, AKA Skull Babylon. And uh, I also go by uh, Wolf Shield. That's uh, my actual middle name. And I've been making videos on YouTube for a while. I saw Reese's videos quite some time ago. Me and him have been making videos for close to like four or five years now. and. Basically, I've been doing a whole bunch of stuff relating to conscious and shifting media. I do my own gonzo journalism videos, all this you can check out on my YouTube channel. And uh, I also do a radio show every Saturday at 11 p.m. EST, Paradigm Shift Radio, facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio, which I totally encourage you to get involved with as well because part of this project, the Team Lucid Dream, is about, again, like I said, talking about all these things so that we can get better at understanding them. And the Paradigm Shift Radio show is a place where we can do that. It's a place where we can have these conversations and it's totally community oriented and it's live. So you can call in, I encourage you to call in. That will be awesome if we hear from you and get more people from the Team Lucid Dream involved with the radio show and we can continue the conversation online through that network. And one of the big things that I, I just got to mention to you guys is that I literally just got done making a movie, that a full-length movie that actually involves the themes of dream exploration, unity, consciousness, transformational festivals, and awareness. And that project is called Journey to Lucidity, The Planted Seed. And basically right now the GoFundMe page is up for that. And if you contribute to the GoFundMe page, then you get to watch the movie. So no different from like buying a ticket for a movie at a movie theater. And once enough money is raised by people contributing it and watching it that first time around, eventually it will be released online publicly for free. But all the feedback, all the feedback so far has been super positive about it. People really, really like it. I'm really, really confident with what it is. And this is actually like my fourth full length movie that I've made and I hope that you get a chance to watch it so please check out the GoFundMe page and contribute to that and let me know what you think about it because that in itself really relates to the idea that this reality is like a dream within itself and it's just a matter or not we're actually aware of that fact and once we become aware of that fact it sort of changes how we interact with it how we live our day-to-day -day lives how we are able to recognize the synchronistic reality that is constantly happening each and every moment of our life and we start to realize that like we actually are these creators like within this matrix within this holographic matrix so to really just sort of talk about what i would like to talk about here in this video now that you know a little bit about me and everything basically one of the ways that i like to approach the idea so if i were to answer the question like what are dreams you know if someone were to just ask me that like even if like a 12 year old kid were to ask me that i always think it's important to be able to explain things uh you know it's important to be able to teach things relative to the student. So what are dreams? The best way I can explain it from my own perspective, from my own opinion, is by looking at it from the bigger picture right off the bat that we are not just our physical body. And in fact, what we actually are, where we are actually from, is a place that's much more like the dream world. So meaning that we've all heard this metaphor that this body is just a vehicle and we are consciousness, we are a soul, whatever you want to call it, where we are actually from is this place that is a different density from this reality. So I mean, this this reality, you know, like everything's really solid, like it looks super solid and stuff like that. But as a lot of us know, and as quantum physics is explaining, 
that solidity is in fact an illusion because it's not the fact that two objects are literally touching against one another. So, so I mean, you know, if I'm like poking my face right now and everything, it's not that like my finger is actually hitting my face, it's that there's an electromagnetic field around both my face and my finger that is repelling each other at a super microcosmic level that is preventing the two from going through each other. So by changing this density, uh, objects become more nebulous is a good word that I can use to describe it, meaning like more cloudy. M objects can actually go through each other. So where we're actually from is this place where it's a different density, it's a different vibration, meaning that time itself is different. Uh, more of us are understanding this, time is relative in a lot of ways. And thoughts literally create more instantaneously in the same way that thoughts create within this reality as, as well. So consciousness itself has been around for like quite some time, right? As, as I'm sure a lot of you like are beginning to understand. And at one point, it didn't have the physical experience of perceiving reality through itself. I mean, you get into this idea that every single atom is a black hole. Every single atom is like a camera lens for reality to see itself through. So reality was constantly moving through itself and looking at these planets and these like empty environments and it saw the rocks and it saw like the water and, and all this stuff and this was all elements that it could interact with but it couldn't directly put its intention into and have it respond instantaneously in a way that it desired. So consciousness itself decided to experience this reality from the ground, from like the experience of a human, through the experience of what began as a single cell. Like the single cell was the first little like vehicle that consciousness created for itself that it could control. Like it could navigate, it could move itself around, it could connect with other cells. So in, in you know in juxtaposition, like uh, a consciousness itself cannot remove a rock. No matter how much consciousness wills itself, uh, it it doesn't move. A, well, it does move a rock. I mean, it just you know it takes a really really long time. So I mean, if it wanted to explore the world, if it wanted to see all these landscape landscapes and experience all these lessons, uh, being a rock wouldn't really be too too efficient. So again. By starting off with a single cell, consciousness created that body for itself. It built itself up, built itself up. All of these like sacred geometrical patterns creating what is now our physical body. So going back to like this idea of dreams, what dreams are, are the place, it's the process of us returning to the space from which we came every single night. So we are indeed and in fact multi-dimensional beings. And more people are starting to understand this. So I mean, rather than dreams just sort of being this like nonchalant thing that happens in your head as like a side effect of the fact that we have a brain, it's rather that the brain itself was designed to act as a transmitter and a receiver for us to exist within this body, but then when we're sleeping to like project out through this body, kind of like a spaceship. Like we literally use this body to travel through space in a way that's more controlled. So I mean, Outside of this body, like this body is kind of like a, it's a spaceship through this dimension, but it's also like a launch pad to other dimensions. And that's where you get into this idea of like the pineal gland literally being a stargate. Like very, very literally being a stargate. And basically that means that like through the pineal gland there's the release of DMT, which has actually been proven just recently a lot up until this point the idea of DMT existing within or being produced by the pineal gland was a theory going back to Strassman's work with like the spirit molecule at that point he admitted it was a theory but now as of a recent study and I can put a link to this in the description of the info of the video in a recent study it proved that the DMT is released uh, through lab rats and it found it through there. So, so now we know. Now we know that DMT is produced in the pineal gland. There is an association between the pineal gland and like expanding into these higher dimensional spaces. And when we dream each night, it's an opportunity for us to realign with the fact that we can create in this reality. So by becoming more aware of the fact that we are multidimensional beings and by becoming more aware of the fact that we create in both this dream reality and the in this waking state, it empowers us. And that's really, 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 in, in my perspective, what this whole lucid dreaming fascination is about. 
it, it's super exciting and it's also super empowering and it helps us step more into ourself, more into our authentic self by figuring out who we are within our dream space. It helps us understand who we are within this space and it helps us be able to accomplish things with more efficiency, it helps us be able to set our intentions with more clarity, and it just helps us be able to see everything around us as a lesson. So, in terms of lucid dreaming, I think there's the obvious tips that you've probably already heard at this point, but I'll just reiterate them and just boil them down, really. To boil them down, Obviously, meditation is a very important thing, and I'll explain a little bit about that in a second. And dream journal is a very important thing because that helps you, like your memory, it helps you develop that muscle, you know? Like, the dream muscle actually is a muscle. So, I mean, depending on your habits, it's, it, it, it rises and it decays. Like, we've all experienced this. Those who have written dream journals, you'll, you'll go through phases, you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm remembering my dreams. And then something will happen, and you'll be like, I haven't remembered my dreams in a while, but at the same time, I haven't been using my willpower to write down my dreams. I guess that explains why, right? So that's a big part of it, is being able to develop the willpower and the consistency to stick with writing down your dreams on a regular basis. And uh, the other thing is to bring reality checks, conscious awareness into this reality. So even just bringing it back to the breath, even doing simple things like every time you walk through a door, do a reality check. Every time you look at the ceiling, do a reality check, and just really try to remind yourself as much as you can and it helps when we have community it helps when numerous people us are pursuing this path together because I mean for one person to just do it by themselves it's really easy to just be like this is you know this isn't working for me this is too difficult whereas if we're working on it together it's like we acknowledge that it is a challenge but the fact that we're all in this together helps us move forward as a community as as a collective consciousness because the more that we awaken within the dream state the more that we awaken within this state and that's really what we're here to do is is one of the big things of this life lesson from from my perspective so there's a lot to talk about with dreams there's a, there's a lot more techniques um, like I said meditation is important because meditation helps us uh, be able to not freak out when we become lucid in a dream a lot of times we'll become lucid in a dream and we'll just be like holy crap I'm lucid dreaming this is amazing and then we'll like lose focus and go back into it or we'll wake up like go back into like non lucidity and whereas with meditation it helps you develop that calmness. So, I mean, you become lucid in a dream, it's like, all right, I'm lucid, let's take a moment, sort of observe, connect, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go forward from here? One idea that I actually just had, like, less than 20 minutes ago, because it, it, was, it was really, really raining out. And uh, so again, like, you know, dreams, we can create anything within our dreams, but we really have to level up through experience, you know? It's really like an MMORPG. It's really hard for us to do the super epic stuff right away, but that's not necessarily just what we're trying to do in dreams. What we're trying to do in dreams is explore parts of ourselves, understand that all this dream world is symbolism and it's all the universe trying to teach itself. Everything within a dream is a lesson and it's our job as a student to be able to take notes and be able to pay attention as effectively and efficiently as possible and to be able to really decode a lot of the symbolism in that dream. But one thing that I really want to practice manifesting in a dream next time uh, I get the opportunity to is the idea of making it rain like how awesome would that be right so I mean I, I, sometimes in dreams we just like to fly or we just like to manifest like you know things in our hand or, or do like sort of nonchalant stuff but I would really love to make it rain in my dream and to go through the experience of having the rain on me and to just really experience that and to be in that connection of like like wow like I created this moment for myself like how beautiful is this like really being able to appreciate it on a whole different level so Having an intention before you get into a lucid dream is always worthwhile. Uh, even just writing stuff down, writing stuff down actually is an act of magic. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this, writing things down, there's something different, opposed to just thinking something, there's something different that happens when you write something down, you scribe it out, and then through the observer, through consciousness, you actually see it. Uh, and it goes back into the, like the awareness. It triggers something. Like it, it activates a different like program within the matrix. It runs like a different EXE program kind of thing. So that's a that's a really cool point to to really point out is uh, write down your intentions that you would like to do within your dreams uh, before you actually do them. So even just saying like you know in your book just write down like I will remember my dreams. Something that simple will make a difference if you really connect to the idea as to why you're writing that down and and. With dreams, again, like you really have to, you really have to understand and believe what it is that you're doing in the dream. So, oftentimes people will say like, do a reality check in this reality by jumping. You know, like just 
do that. But when you do this here in this density, you really have to believe that you're going to go up, that you're going to fly up into the ceiling. If you do it here and just like, well, obviously it's not going to work. I mean, it's not going to work. Then you go into your dream and you'd be like, maybe it's going to work, but maybe it won't because it usually doesn't and it's not working. So when you're doing it here, like straight up Peter Pan style, like if you think you can fly, you can fly. So really just work with the processing and catch yourself as to whether or not you're actually being honest when you set those intentions. So um, yeah, when you go into a dream, really connect with what you want to believe because it's hard it's it's challenging I don't like hard isn't really the right word it's challenging meaning it's it's something that we have to go through the process of getting better at it's a learning experience meaning that like a lot of times uh, when we're dreaming because of the non solidity of this reality we'll get moments where we're like trying to run and it's really slow and stuff like that and that's because like we're really connected to trying to move our physical body whereas in the dream space it's like our astral body it's our connection to like you know in that other dimension and we're not really moving our body in the same way like you could almost like imagine you're moving yourself from a single point you're kind of like pulling yourself from like an orb floating above your head and like that's kind of pulling you in different directions opposed to trying to move yourself simply by running your legs and moving your arms like that's not gonna make the difference like you will yourself forward you set the intention and again it's totally it's totally right in here like this, this little bad boy like right in here the third eye the pineal like that is kind of the driver's seat that is like the point where consciousness comes into out through and back out of into like these higher dimensions so it's really cool like it's seriously stuff that you know they didn't really teach us this stuff growing up but it's super, 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 super awesome and exciting because once you get into these other, once you really get good at lucid dreaming, and again, I'm not, like maybe I, I could have said this at the beginning, but just so everybody's like, again, familiar with where I'm at, I'm not an expert lucid dreamer. Um, I know a lot of people who are involved with this project uh, do lucid dream quite, quite regularly. I'm not at that stage, which is actually totally something that I'm comfortable with because it allows me to relate to all of us, all, all the rest of us who are also not at that stage, who are also not regular lucid dreamers. I don't always clearly remember my dreams. It's something that I have to write down. If I don't write them down, I, I won't remember them. If I don't develop the habit, I won't remember them. Some people lucid dream by default, not my case. Meaning again, I actually have to put the work into it in the same way that I'm encouraging you to put the work into it too. So we can experience it together so that we can talk about it and so that we can encourage more people to do it as well. And again, eventually pass down this information to the generations to follow so that the next generation can be like a generation of like awesome kids who are like lucid dreaming all the time. And because they continue that method, they're going to be like manifesting in this reality, like super effectively. And that's what we need. We need like that next generation of like conscious creators, of, of wizards, of magicians, of Jedi's, like that's, you know, that's who and what we are, that's, that's what we're here to be, that's one thing we can be, should we choose to be it, or we can just like be a dog barking under a tree, so, again, like dogs, like, they dream, like it, it's, you know, it's hard for me to say what they dream of, like it's probably a lot of dog stuff, but even when you think about like cats, like cats dream, like cats are really probably quite active in the astral and I'd be really curious to know what they sort of dream about because I doubt it's just cat stuff like I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's like some other stuff going on but um we're not really there yet so uh, I mean maybe we could figure it out maybe you can like dream through the consciousness of a cat like that'd be an interesting thing like what's it like to dream like a dolphin you know there do dolphins even sleep that's a good question actually maybe they don't so um maybe they do I don't know so but anyways um that's basically enough at this point. This video is 20 minutes long. I'll try to post a video dream log. This is actually being filmed on the Thursday and my posts are going to go up every other Friday from what I believe on the Team Lucid Dream page. Which again, check it out if you have not yet. It's an awesome project. So many of us are contributing to it. 14 awesome YouTubers and more to come in the, in the future. And uh, so I'm going to try and post a video dream log tomorrow morning by setting my intention of meditating uh, before I go to sleep and really just trying to go into sleep like more consciously and do some reality checks like leading up to it and everything. So uh, if there's a dream video posted tomorrow, you'll see that. If it's not posted tomorrow, then keep an eye open it because I'll try to do them when I can. I try to do them when it's appropriate for me. So again, check out the GoFundMe slash Journey to Lucidity page and Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio and I look forward to continuing this conversation. Uh, I want to hear from you, like what are dreams for you? How would you explain dreams? And uh, I'd love to be able to try explaining this again because every time I try explaining this I get 
I, I can always explain it a little bit differently and it's always a learning experience for me. So thank you for listening and uh, yeah, feel free to check out a whole bunch of my videos in the meantime and uh, on behalf of myself and uh, my dog Shelby, we will see you in the future. That's right Shelby, bark him out. You tell him. All right. <laughs> Good boy.